is now, in November 2014, 12 years since the naked doctor first saw the light of day. Uh, the book, that is. The lady herself, my very good friend, Dr. Evadne Hinge, saw the light of day long before that. In 1920, a lifetime ago. The reasons for the delay and for her reluctance to go to publication sooner are made clear in the foreword that Evadne graciously agreed to provide. And the fact that she has finally given the go-ahead is something of a minor miracle. And how did that happen? I simply badgered her constantly about it until she finally gave in. She's a stubborn creature, but then so am I. I'd always enjoyed hearing the anecdotes she would occasionally share with me, tales of her distant past, and was determined sooner or later to get the full story. So here it is, the first part anyway. There's more of Evadne's Odyssey to come but a short example will have to suffice for now. August 1937. Backstage at the Winter Garden Theatre, Rothsay, Scotland. Five minutes, whores! The unmistakable adenoidal tones of Shug the Callboy rang out from the corridor. Seated in the shabby dressing room, I gazed into the fly-blown mirror in front of me. Who was this stranger? I asked myself idly, and not for the first time. Short, crimped hair of a dazzling if unconvincing gold, plucked and pencilled eyebrows, lashes beaded with hot black, rouged and powdered complexion, lips of a vibrant carmine. I knew who she was, of course. No longer Evadne Hinge, she was Marina Montpellier, Rina uh, to her close friends. Further down the dressing room table, Sandra Slack and Phyllis Small were discussing their adventures of the night before. It turned out that the party that Phyllis had been invited to was not the upmarket society gathering she had anticipated. Oh, it was a dump, Sandra. The dregs were there. Oh, it was dreadful. Two guys gets into a fight, and next thing you know, the police is knocking at the door. I says to Raymond, I'm out of here right now. I've had my problems with the lads in the past. So the two of us has, heads into the kitchen. I climbs onto the sink and climbs out of the window, still clutching my drinks. I get stuck halfway. So Ray has to give me a shove in the arse. And the next thing you know, I'm flattening my face in the back court. Drinks spilt, stockings laddered, heel of my shoes broken, new dress all ripped. Sandra pushed a cab or two back into place and said sympathetically, Oh, Phyllis, no, you're in new dress, a lavender shantung. Aye, said Phyllis. Aye, ripped to shreds it was, but that's no the worst. The next thing you know, Raymond lands right on top of me and says, I hope that's you, lover. And what do you think he does next? He kisses me full on the lips. What do you think of that? Oh, I was furious. Sandra appeared short-sightedly into the mirror. I bet you were, Phyllis. I hope you gave him a right telling off. Oh, I did better than that. I crossed my legs and I broke his glasses. <laughs> the dressing room erupted into raucous laughter. Even, even I had to smile. But Phyllis hadn't finished. And then I tuned out. I had had the same or similar conversations only too many times in the past. I struggled into the unbecoming costume I would wear for my appearance as Tina Tulip in our Barry sequence, The Garden of Beauty. At the same time, Sandra and Phyllis were attiring themselves as Phoebe Flox and Dolly Dahlia. The Garden of Beauty, indeed. I had forborne from saying to our director that a garden, however beautiful, in which Phlox, Dahlia and Tulip bloomed simultaneously would have would have foxed the talents of Capability Brown himself. I forbore quite a lot these days. I quickly learned that smart remarks, clever comments, had no place in the Scottish Variety Theatre and that such things were likely to lead to the sack. Beginners, whores and leg openers, bold chuck. Shut it, you skelly, we runt, roared Phyllis. It was true that the vile chug did have a terrifying squint. We ladies rose and began the long descent towards the stage. Hi, Rena. See you later. Young Joe Cameron, our second comic, squeezed against the wall to allow us ladies to pass. 
Yes, Joe, I'll see you then. I'll be there. I occasionally fail to respond to Marina or Rina. My name, indeed, my very identity had undergone several changes in the last 12 months, as I had deliberately arranged. But what does it matter? What is it they say? What's in a name? Well, in my case, quite a lot. I was christened Evadne, Mona, Montpellier, Hinge, after all. And the story behind this sonorous and resounding appellation is only one of the mysteries which is cleared up in The Naked Doctor. Evadne's Odyssey promises to be quite a journey. We, Evadne and I, hope you will enjoy this first instalment. While it will be particularly cherished by those already enthusiasts of Hinge and Brackett, it is a story that will, we think, appeal to readers of all ages. It paints a vivid picture of a long-vanished era and will, we hope, bring back memories to those of you who still have them, to quote Dame Hilda Brackett. The Naked Doctor is available exclusively online in both printed and electronic Kindle versions from Amazon. More information is available on the publisher's own website, www.gjbpublishing.co.uk. Thank you.